Master, what happens to those soldiers' souls when they died fighting for their country, but not at their will? Uh, for example, if they have been forced to fight, or if it's just their duty, since they were born to a country where the leaders want to go to war, can they go to heaven? Mm-mm. I wish they would. Those who kill, no matter what, no matter why, no matter how, will never forget it, nor forgive themselves. So their souls will be drifting in some dark and terrifying places, or, or suffering or torturing places, until the effect wears off, until their karmic debt of blood is paid off in some form. Even if it's not their fault, it could take forever, poor souls. I told you, killing is absolutely against our own nature. It's not heaven who condemns us. It's we who cannot pardon our sinful actions. And we never forget or forgive ourselves. We have to pay. If they want to finish the war quickly, uh, have peace faster than uh, the leaders of these warring nations, or war deciders, war nations, or armed groups, violent conflict groups, should officially abandon their headquarters, destroy it, destroy it, or seal off. Go far away to build new ones to avoid negative impact and avoid the killing energy of that place, avoid bad luck for themselves. Because if you kill somebody, later you get killed as well, you know. You get killed or their families get killed, yeah? The leaders avoid the energy, avoid the bad luck for themselves as well, huh? Not just for the nation or all involved. It's for their own family's sake and their own sake, yes? Because even if they're not killed sometimes, they get injured or badly, you know, um, wounded, thing like that. Or their, their families are in trouble uh, or get killed in front of their eyes. This is a very sad thing for them as well. And even if all are well in this lifetime, hell will be waiting for them. It's a through and through bad luck area. If a, a leader or a group leader happen to sit on these negative portals or roads. They should vow to abandon war as well inside their heart and rebuilding what they can do. Rebuilding, you know, help in rebuilding effort. Redeem the mistake. Yes. A rebuild, repair the things or places that has been destroyed by their action directly or indirectly. Repent to heaven and pray for forgiveness and blessing and help to change to a better person themselves. What is the impact of the drastic loss of spiritual merit points on a place or the group that committed mass killing of humans, Master? Oh, we can't even finish count. Those responsible will stay in hell with all kinds of horrid, painful agony for eons or more enduring untold suffering. Nobody can help them. Heaven will be helpless. They will die again and again, the way their former victims did, multiple times over and over. But the thing is, they cannot even truly die. They just suffer all the agony, the pain, as if dead or injured, but fully conscious, fully conscious of the pain. I mean, in this world, if you are under operation, the doctor gives you anesthesia, okay? So that uh, you don't feel the pain. But in hell, no. You're fully conscious and you'll be feeling like that again, again and again, nonstop. They are the most brilliant generation of our time. They're not born to die. I don't care die a hero or die a what. It's the same. It's a waste of resource. They are able-bodied, they're intelligent, they're strong, they're handsome, 
and it cost millions of dollars even to raise him. And so much love from the family and friends so that he grow up like that. He's not just nobody, he's somebody. He has family. Yeah, he might even be married and have children already. But he's forced to go out there and shoot somebody he don't even have any enmity with. You cannot change love into hatred. And tell a young man who has been loved all his lifetime until now, come out and turn into a hateful person and then use a gun to kill another person. Also grow out of love from a mother somewhere. Nurture like a beautiful flower in your garden with all love and care and attention and hope for the future. And you boom, just like one bullet this big. Finished. Such a beautiful dream. Got up. People should be given hope, inspiration to live for, not to die for. You're not born, grow up, just to keep a war and then die for it. The children are in the prime of their life and they are also very idealistic. So this good and pure energy and enthusiasm has to be used for peaceful purpose, for building the world, for helping the needy, yeah? That is the kind of heroism that the young people love to spend their energy on. They would love it. The more war, the more death, the more death, the more enemies. The more enemy, the more war, the more war, the more death, the more death, the more enemy. It's, it's a vicious circle. There's no end to it. We just have to shake hands and forgive each other. War is never a solution. We just have to stop. Master, you had mentioned before that since people don't see the immediate retributions of their bad actions, they tend to be more oblivious to the concept of bad karma. It's true. Humans are waging wars with animals every day. Does this in turn propel future wars and, and conflicts? Yes, yes, it does. It does. Killing karma is heavy. When there is enough violent energy of killing, concentrate in one place or in one country, war will break out there. Or disaster of grand scale will descend upon that place or on the world. Let's hope that all will come to their senses and stop all violence between humans and animals, toward animals, before worse disaster even manifest, and before things get more out of control in our planet in our world. Either we must wait for bad karma to end or move, you know, the leaders, the one who can decide a big, important decision should move to improve their lot and improve our lot and make clearer, more correct decision. We can beat fate if we have faith, but to move away is a faster and better chance to have peace on the planet and to move away and to stop killing animals. Master, you, you said that if one kills an adult person, one would lose one to four billion spiritual merit points. Yes. What happens when thousands of people are killed in a short period of time, such as in a war? Huh. We can't even imagine the heavy comic burden that those responsible will have to bear in the so near future. If not in this life, then after this life. The after life is even more so frightening that I wish no one this fate. I wish no one to ever have to know it, to experience it. It is too horrifying to even think about it. If the leaders who engage in war know about their fate after life because of the war that they're involved in or created, they would die with fright now and never want to wage war at any cost. 
they would abandon their country, their power, their throne, their palace, their wealth, their possession, whatever. They would abandon all and run away to avoid suffering. And they go into the forest, repent or meditate or pray all their life with penance, whatever, so that they can avoid this kind of suffering after life if they can see it now. Just they don't see it. That's why they continue. <laughs> 